acquainted with grief. This was a time in our lives. My first son fell ill. Uh, and he had uh, many, many years of treatment. We had to travel a couple hundred miles up to Birmingham. Week after week after week. Several years we had to do this. Who knows how we ever, <laughs> it's a miracle we ever got it. We ever uh, got through it. But I guess it's a trying of your faith works patience. But anyway, it was the end of the world when, when that doctor looked across that table and told me that my only son had leukemia. Well, I walked out in the lobby I was dumbfounded. You know, I didn't want to live. But here I am, 50 years later, there and abouts. You know, the trying of our faith works patience, brother, sister. That's all I can tell you. But anyway, he lives over here behind us. He's still alive. Of course, all that uh, treatment and everything took a toll on his body. And he has trouble here later on in life. But there were joyous times right there. So anyway, we went down to Florida. We used to go to Florida. Precious memories <laughs> as a family. Of course, I have uh, three boys and a girl. We all piled in this little car one time uh, before the seatbelt thing. It wouldn't hold but five, but there were six in there. We had them between the legs. <laughs> we took off to Florida. And, uh, of course, uh, it's precious memories now, but it was hot when we took when I took that picture. But anyway, this morning, I just want to get with everybody and talk to you. We serve a master that is acquainted with grief. And I'd like to bring to you this one little text here, if I could. Uh, let me see what it is this morning. This little text kind of sums it all up, in my view, about our situation here upon this earth that we should all uh, ponder. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. That's Jesus. This is in uh, Titus 3. Start with verse 4. You can read the whole chapter if you want to. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Isn't that something, brother and sister? Jesus Christ appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which is shed on us abundant, abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Did you get that, brothers and sisters? It's not according to anything that you do. This sums up my doctrine pretty good. Then later on, uh, later on in the chapter, it says, you know, be careful to maintain good works. You know, they're profitable. I'm not saying good works aren't profitable, but I'm just saying that's not the, the stone upon which we, uh, uh, we're justified before God. It's according to his mercy. Not according to anything you do. Not according to anything, how much Bible you know. Not according to uh, anything. Walking an aisle, doing this and doing that. It's according to his mercy, brothers and sisters. And I sure am glad. Because I've been need, needing some. Here lately, I need his mercy every day. 
And thank God, I ran over there wearing his great love toward us. He had a great love. <laughs> and rich mercy. That's one of my most, of my most famous sayings that I always put up here because God is rich in mercy. He's not poor in mercy, brothers and sisters. He's rich in mercy. And uh, that's my little thought for the day. I guess that's enough, but if I think of anything else to say, I say it. God is rich in mercy, brothers and sisters. It's, and then I want you to center, uh, uh, look at this little verse where it says, verse 5 in Titus 3, by, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, any kind of work, brother and sister, any kind of righteous work that you might think you have merited uh, God's uh, quickening you by the Holy Spirit. Uh, that, that's not the basis of it. It's according to his mercy. He saved us. And get and right down here below, it says, by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The, see, the brother and sister, the the regeneration is when God comes to you without you asking him. Without you asking him, brothers and sisters. He came to you and he, he came and found you. The Holy Ghost, like the wind, blew you away. And singled you out because you were one of his beloved children that he chose before the world even started. And he came into your heart and quickened you and you were a regenerated person. And, uh, I know, uh, <laughs> but anyway, you were uh, you had His Spirit living in you, and he, and, he, and He'll be in you forevermore, brothers and sisters, forevermore. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. His Spirit took up His abode in your heart. That's why it's hard for you to hate people, <laughs> to hate on folks. It don't fit right, you know. You want to hate folks, but you can't hate them too much because of the mercy he's shown you according to his mercy. But anyway, that was my scripture for the day. I hope it helps somebody out there because there's nothing you can do. Nothing you do right, nothing you do wrong is going to keep you from your heavenly home, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Just want to put that out to you this morning. Uh, one more time before I go. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. That's pretty clear. But according to his rich mercy, he saved us. <laughs> I put the rich in there. It's over there in the Bible somewhere else. By his rich mercy. But anyway, that's my little message for today. Just wanted to show you. We serve a God who is acquainted with grief, brothers and sisters. He knows uh, our situation and uh, I wind it up here and uh, get on, go on to the next subject on my mind but anyway peace and love from this old boy down here in Alabama <laughs>